This part says that because of one man's sin, all have sinned. But, but because of a one man's righteousness, many become righteous. I looked at that and I, I, I said, now I know I must have messed that one up. It said that many, for one man's sin, all sin, but because of one man's righteousness, many shall become righteous. Welcome to Bethel Christian Church, BCC TV, Wednesday night. Recap. Get ready. It's going to be a good one. Powerful. Dynamic. Extraordinary. Life changing. Mind blowing. You going to love it. Pay attention. Get your notes out. Wind down to this. Get ready. Enjoy. Give honor to Christ, Hallelujah. our Savior. Honor to the pastor and his wife, and pastor and his wife. And give honor unto all of you in your respective places. Praise God. Uh, Aaron kind of put me on a uh, defensive there. And now I've got to straighten out all of this and uh, keep in mind that what this week is going into, and as we go into it, uh, it's going. It, it is for us. It's a celebration because what at the end gives us an opportunity to walk with Christ. Uh, <clears throat> let's pray Father God I come once again to the throne of grace in the name of your son Jesus I ask you to open the ears that they may hear and the hearts that they may receive but most of all Father make them acceptable to your word for it is more than just that leads and guides us into truth and it guides us into the path of righteousness it is a promise that you have made that if we believe and call upon your name we shall be saved yes. through this we can see what you've had in plan all along Thank you, Lord. in Jesus name amen, amen. amen. say amen again Hallelujah. For he alone is worthy. This is Palm Sunday. And to kind of get you set up for what's going on, uh, this would be the time that Jesus was preparing for a uh, old we're going to say a week of suffering, but what he was preparing for was his death. And he went through this sequence. Now, the word says that the king of Israel would come into the city riding on a coat. Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, in John chapter 12 is where you find all of this good stuff going on. Uh, and he, he sent his disciples to get a young colt 
that had never been written on and brought it to him as he came into the city of, of and uh, they came and they gave praise to him as they pulled on the coat, the, the outer garments, and the palm leaves, saying, Holy, 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 yes, yes. to the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Yes, Jesus. Now, if you if you, you got the whole concept, because uh, John didn't want to go into the, the, uh, the all the praises that were going on there, so he said, Hosanna, Hosanna to the Most High. Yes, yes. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Uh -huh. But it was, it was actually saying that he is not just coming. Mm -hmm. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords and he's coming to set a kingdom up. But Jesus said that he did not set this kingdom up and he's not going to set it up and rule right now. But he had another purpose. Jesus. This purpose was that he was preparing a place that we could come back to God. Now, <clears throat> let me start where it really supposed to start at. Okay. Isaiah 118 says, Come now, let us reason together said the Lord, do your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Yes. Though there are be though they be red as crimson, they shall be as wool. Yes. Now, when he told Isaiah this, he had came to a point now, let us reason together. And uh, we find in Revelation where the mediator is now standing between mankind and God mm -hmm. to uh, make sure that those things that God has set in order is now been now and has been fulfilled. So he's now here saying, "Let us reason. Let us come together and let's reason together." And because you are, and we, we're going to get to this point, where because you are a sinner, mm -hmm. now, uh, Romans 3 and 23 says, uh, excuse me, Romans 6 and 23 says, but the wages of sin is death, uh -huh. but the gift of God is eternal life. Yes. Now, how do we get to the sin part so that when we see why that the thing that's going happening this week brings out an issue? So the sin part is that Adam, who uh, was set in the garden to do his thing, and he was deceived by the serpent. This part says that because of one man's sin, all have sinned. But, but because of a one man's righteousness, many become righteous. And I looked at that and I, I, I said, now I know I must have messed that one up. It says that many, for one man's sin, all sin, but because of one man's righteousness, many shall become righteous. What happened to all? Well, I'll get to that in a minute too. Uh, now, in Psalm 51 and 7, it says, Purge me with hip hyssop, and I shall be clean. 
Wash me and I shall be white as snow. Now, we, we're going to get to this because that's where all of this is leading to. Jesus is going to be the one that purges us and washes us with the hyssop because of his action. He is going to make sure that now we're white as snow. Glory. Hebrews 9 and 12 says that uh, we offer up uh, sheep and goats and bulls for our sins, but it did not please God because it did not take away our sins. Uh -huh. But he brought forth one that would Thank you, God. take away our sins. And uh, I began to try to put all this together and how do this work so that we can see why it became so important that we understand what's going on at the cross. And here's, here's part of it. Uh, we find in John chapter 3, and I'm going to try to break this down and, and not, not go line by line, uh, but here's what happened. In chapter 3, we have a teacher that came to ask Jesus uh, about some of his messages and how could he be saved? And, and, and Jesus told him that he had to be born again. Right. And, and being born again, and you know how we think when we hear being born, we think that like Nicodemus did, mm -hmm. uh, that how can we go back into the womb? Right. And how can we be rebirthed? But he wasn't talking about that type of birth yes. because he turns around and says that which was born of flesh is flesh, but yes. that which is born of the spirit is spirit. But perceptively, he was saying that we must be born of the spirit. Right. Uh, and, uh, and, and he do, he went as far as saying that we must be born of the spirit and of water. Yes. Yes. Praise be to God. Praise the Lord. That's where we start getting our baptisms from. Mm -hmm. And that's why uh, uh, when we obey and when we obey God completely, we get baptized after we believe after we confess that we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, yes. then we want to get baptized. Uh, now, as we get closer to this point where Jesus has come into the city and he has, uh, and they've already said it, you realize that he, is that when he left the city, they came chasing him to make him king so that he would rule over Israel. But uh, he wouldn't accept the position now or then because he will accept it later. And, and when he accepts it later, he's going to rule with a iron rod. Or uh, one man would say, "What an iron fist!" He's gonna what he say is gonna be it, and there's not gonna be no back talking. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, my grandkids know about back talking because they try to do that all the time with me. Uh, I, I tell them to do some thing, and they say, "Well, I got something else to do is more important." <laughs> but there's no be won't be no back talking. Now, in doing so, we find that there's going to be a transformation going on in the, in the spiritual realm. 
where we, we that are born again become from corruptible seed to incorruptible seed. Okay. And, and then we'll be part of the family of God. Now, the reason for all of this comes into the part, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to that, and I'm going to show you a little bit of something that's going on, that the palms really mean a lot more than what we give them representation to. Uh, because those palms, uh, back in those days, uh, you find that, uh, well, let me go further back to where Moses uh, uh, did his thing. The, uh, the Lord told Moses to make sure that there was on the high priest's garment, there was a palm and a pomegranate and a bell. A palm, a pomegranate, and a bell. This was put on the garment. Uh, but the palm itself represents uh, liberty and truth. Okay. okay. Now, uh, and, and we, we find that in the house of God, there were cherubims, seraphims, palms everywhere. Leadership. Now, as this, the day goes on, there are specific other things that were going on during that week leading up to the crucifixion. And one of those things that led, led up to that we do uh, as a remembrance to who he is every first Sunday uh, as, he, as he set up. And this is where right after the coat, he comes in under the coat, he goes and tells his disciples to go to a certain man and follow him to a place that they're going to have to go and make ready so that they can have the Passover. Right. Now, um, if you realize that particular time, uh, the Passover is always done with uh, bitter herbs, a roasted lamb, and unleavened bread. Those three items it has to be served at evening uh, of the day of, uh, of, of the Passover. Right. That at evening, because at dusk, then when it becomes dark, it's a new day, it becomes Passover. And the day before is always called the day of preparation. Uh, and, and you prepare everything during that day so that it would be ready to be eaten that evening at dusk. Now, in the upper room, at this point, Jesus took bread and he took wine and he had a mixture of bitter herbs in the midst. And uh, there was a lot of stuff that went around there. And this is where, where uh, the people asked him who was going to deceive him. Uh, and, and, but that goes into a whole different concept. But there, it, he was personal with them. This is where he went and washed their feet and, and told them that. And then he went to the garden. From that point where he served the uh, bitter herbs, bread, and wine, uh, that was at, for that point, he told them that he would not eat nor drink until he entered into the kingdom with them. Yes, right. Okay, now, now from that point, Jesus had not had anything to eat or drink. And he went into the garden. And uh, you have to understand, from the point that he served this 
pre-Passover meal, everything started to go downhill for him. But it was God's plan yes, yes. that uh, he uh, went through this series of events. Correct. Now, Aaron and preached half a message. <laughs> Preach it again. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to tell you exactly how things went because it, it becomes important that you understand that those palms are the reason that you have salvation. It's the reason you have salvation. And, and, and as he went to the garden, he took them, he went to the garden, he precipitately went to the garden to pray mm -hmm. because his spirit was enlightened and heavy. Yes. So, uh, and he, he asked the three, his best three disciples, you know who they were, John and, and Peter and James, uh, to go farther with him. And even as they lingered behind, the, the word says that they stopped and he was a stone, a, a stone throw away. Mm -hmm. Now, my grandson liked to throw thong, stones and that's kind of a far off. Mm -hmm. It can be pretty far off. And he went and he knelt mm -hmm. and began to pray. And this is where we say that Jesus became more human because he was trying to get out of something that he hadn't already knew that he had to go through. And, and he prayed, Lord, if there was a way to get around this specific bitter cup, let's try it. But not my will, but your will be done. Now, the scripture says that he done it three times. Nevertheless, Father, your will be done. And the third time he comes back, he told those three disciples, could you not just tarry for one hour? Boy, they were so tired, they, were, they, they fell asleep. Then the deceiver came with a crowd from uh, the uh, Pharisees. They were actually soldiers and they came and we have to, I have to give you the whole concept because I want you to see that and when Mark said one thing Luke said something else and Matthew said something else about that sequence but when John said it he said it had power okay there was where uh Peter cut the ear off the servant and you find it, Jesus healed him. But there was something more specific that we did not grasp, most of the time we didn't grasp, is that during all the stuff that was going on, Jesus calmly asked them, who do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And we said, I am. They fell back on their knees. They got up and he asked again, who do you seek? He said, they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And he said again, I am. And they fell to the knees. Judas at this time came and kissed him on the cheek. And the soldiers then took him. That I am is powerful. Yes. 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 Now this is where everything begins for uh, the winning of our souls and to pay the price of sin. 
the trial began as a mockery because they already fixed it. It was already a fixed crowd. Trump crowd. Sound like one of our election for president. It was a fixed a, a real election. It was fixed before he even started. And so, uh, it, about this time, it was around the third hour or third watch of the night. And they took him from one, uh, one judgment place to another, and he ends back at the same place. Now, by the time they got through with all of this stuff, it was daytime. Crowds had already started to gather because of who he was. And it, it went back and forth so that uh, it, it, we get the understanding of the is that when the Roman satirian said, uh, and it was a big conversation because he asked a lot of questions, he said, who are you? And he answered this way, you know. He said, are you a king? Jesus said, if I was a king, then my soldiers would have already been here. We, 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 we get to the uh, uh, real nitty gritty of this thing. And then he asked him a specific question that changed his mind, but nobody thought of it. He said, they say that you are the son of God. Are you? Sarah said that I have, I wash my hands of this. I got nothing to do with this man, righteous man. People already know who he was. I have nothing to do with this righteous man. From that point, he said, now what did I do with him? They said, crucify. This point is where everything changes. He said, I'm going to let this pass, and I'm going to ask again in a few minutes, but let's scourge him and then see if they will let him go. So during the point of him getting scourged, they did some crazy stuff. One dude planted a, a, a crown of thorns and placed on his head. And he didn't just place it there. They pushed it down so it began to bleed. Then another one grabbed the, his beard and yanked it out. Now they lay him down with his hand bound on a whipping post. They gave him 39 stripes. Each one to the flesh off of his back. So bad and so severe that the whip not just laid on his back, it, came around to his front and every time they pulled it away it took away his flesh. Now because of thorns on his head and the missing portion of his beard, his face begins to swell. His back is bleeding. His side is bleeding. And they bring him back to Herod and they asked him he asked again, what should I do with this Jesus? They said, crucify him, crucify him. He said, 
Well, you have uh, a choice to make. Uh, we have Barnabas mm -hmm. and we have Jesus. Which one should I let go? Now, at this point, it is right about the third hour of the day. Just good morning. About the third hour of the day. Now they take Jesus and give him a cross to take up to Calvary as they bring along two prisoners. Now, I want you to understand that these prisoners are bound and Jesus' hands are bound in front of him and they lay the cross on his shoulder and he's got the cross in this way and he's going up the hill. Now the two prisoners' hands are high, tied behind their back so they can't carry a cross. And they're walking behind him. Now, the cross, we say, got heavy and he fell because of the load. The truth is, at that point, our sins had begun to weigh on him. Because he was going to be that lamb to take away the sin of the world. Now, by the time they get him to Galgotha, he's lost so much blood, his face is swollen, so unrecognizable. And he begins to look like a raw piece of meat from the waist, from the waist up. Now they got there, they nail him on the cross. Scripture says they nail him in the hand. That doesn't work. They nail him here, right beyond those joints, both hands, and then they nail his feet to the cross so that he didn't have enough leverage to push himself up so he can catch breath. Now, we get to see where Jesus becomes the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. But we also see that there's another battle that is happening in the form. Now, Jesus says that, Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. As well as he said, that I give my life, I have the power to take it up again. He said, Father, I surrender my spirit unto you, for it is finished. Then he said he thirsts. Now I understand when a dying man thirsts, all you need is just something wet on his lip. What they gave him was vinegar and hyssop, bitter herb. Now, this comes to play as they place him in a grave. Now, Paul said this. 
to, let me let me back up to this because this is important for us in the third chapter of John Jesus told Nicodemus that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believeth in him shall not perish but have the eternal life for God sent not his son into the world to condemn it but through him the world might be saved now those two verses are very important but the next one is just as important for those that believe not are condemned already because they they would not believe in the only begotten Son of God. Now, Paul says that the word is my thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. It, the word, it is the word of faith which we preach. This is where the other part of us being reasoning with God. So Paul saying that the word that we speak either condemns us or gives us righteousness. He said that if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That statement then brings you into that point where you are either transformed into the family of God or you're still on your way to hell. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Yes. Praise God. For the scripture says, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Praise God. Now, from the cross, he activated all of that. Just from the cross. When he said it was finished, salvation began. When he said it was finished, those that believed that he was sunk by the Father, you'll see that he became the good shepherd. He became the way maker. He became the truth and the life. He became the pathway to righteousness. He became those things that we would have never been able to do because now he is not just the way. He is the lawyer. <laughs> He's the doctor. He is the habituation. He is the communicator to for us to the Father. Thank you, God. Now, when he went into the grave, he was a mingled mess. But when he came out, he was a glorified body. There was only two things remaining. the spear hole that was in his side and the nail scars. 
in his hand to prove that his word is true. To prove that he was and is the lamb that took away the sins. We do not have to make those sacrifices anymore. All we have to do today is with our heart believe and with our mouth confess. Now simple as it seems and simple as it may be, sometimes it's difficult for us to see. Because our life goes in a tinglement. We believe that we're supposed to live the way we want to live. But there is a mandate mm -hmm. on our lives. That mandate is Jesus Christ, yeah. the righteous. If we say that we love him, yeah. we must keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous because they're simple. It's just to love the Lord God with all thy heart, thy mind, and thy soul, and thy strength, and thy neighbor as thyself. Yes. If we believe that he came to this earth, those palms mean something. If we believe that he died and rose again. Those palms yes, mean sir. something. Yes, if we believe that he created the very things that killed them, those palms mean something. Yes. Every item that brought forth, you realize it's nature or natural for us to agree or disagree, but there, there are signs that God has placed in the earth to prove to us that there is a living God. Amen. And that he still wants a relationship with us. I want you to remember this as I close with prayer that three days after this began the worst time for mankind because Jesus crucified and from that nobody knew which way we were going to go until he rose up yeah. on the third day. Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Father God, we thank you for your word. Yes. Yeah. We thank you, God, for the insight. Yes. For you have created all things for thy pleasure, and for thy pleasure thou have created all things. Yes, have, Keep us, Father, in your way. Mm -hmm. Continue to lead and guide us into your truth. Let us grow as your son did in obedience. Lead us into that place of righteousness for the name's sake. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much again for your continued service and faithfulness. If this ministry is a blessing to you, 
please continue to like, follow, and most of all, share. You are the Miracle on 143rd Street. Be a blessing.